Welcome back, it's Q&A week. Just like whenever we do these, we seem to get a lot of the same questions after we do one. Uh, we did the one about waiting flies last week, and, and then or last month, I mean, and now we've got a lot of the same kind of questions, mostly about fly design. A little bit about leader constructions, uh, we'll do that one next, maybe. Uh, but today we've got a question from Paul Wolgamuth in Waterville, Maine. Sorry, Paul, I know I crushed your name. Uh, Paul's question was kind of, it was kind of a closest to all of them. So uh, in your Q&A video, you touched on adding weight to the fly when you have a purpose for that weight. Could you talk more about the other aspects of streamer design? For instance, why and when do you, when do you, why and when do you add articulation? And when do you use wool heads over spun deer heads and hook selection, etc.? So, great question. Uh, before I go on, I'm going to about directly to his questions. First, I want to, I'm just going to kind of touch on where I think fly design is going right now because uh, I'm, I, I pay attention to the blogs. I'm on the road a lot and I talk to a lot of fly guys. And what I'm seeing happening is we're building a lot of big flies. People are building a lot of really big flies, kind of like everything's bigger, bigger, bigger. And sometimes there's not a lot of thought process in the flies. And so just as an example, I'm going to give you kind of a brief synopsis of how I design my fly, what I look for in my flies. And it's a very simple and um, basic fly design. And I've got Johnny's new Kill Whitey fly right here. And the first thing I want you to understand, this fly is super simple, right? It's just, but this fly has been two years, two years, two years in the making, Johnny, I think. This fly, and what he's done is what I'm going to go over. But the first thing, I, I just want you to realize how I do my flies, aside from all the stuff I'm going to talk about in a second, is the front, I like to have more friction on the head than I do on the tail. I want this part of the head to slow down so I've got a stalling effect because something up front slows it down, whether it be weight or the friction on the hair, or the wool, or the synthetic, whatever it is. And on the rear end, I like to see stuff that's slick. I want it to be slipperier on the rear end than the front because when you go like this and you pull the fly, when you get more friction on the front, it slows down, the rear end's faster, and it starts to articulate for you. You're building motion into your fly without doing anything other than realizing one end's got to stall, one end's got to accelerate. So, to that note, the first thing you've got to ask yourself is what do you want the fly to do? You're not just simply putting a fly together saying, well, it should look like this or that. What do you want it to do? Do you want the fly to articulate horizontally, vertically? Do you want it to serpentine up and down, sideways? Do you want it to look like something? Do you want it to look like a bait fish? Do you want it to just be an attractor that's a reactionary fly? figure that out, and then figure out what are you going to do to achieve that? How are you going to make that fly do what you want it to do? And third, fill the footprint. Make sure it does exactly what you want it to do. And then the, the last but most critical part of every streamer, does it swim? If the fly doesn't swim, it ain't hunting. If the fly's not hunting, you've made a lot of stuff, put a lot of stuff, a lot of effort into it, but it's not going to fish. I, I was doing a show last weekend with Pat, Pat Cohen and Rich Stroll as two really great fly designers and we were talking about, I made the comment that I, I would say that 80% of all my flies uh, that I've ever produced weren't, wouldn't catch a starving fish in a trout pond, maybe without a crawler on it. They just didn't hunt. They, you know, in my mind, I, I build the fly, I look at it, I go, man, this guy, I mean, it's kind of a running joke. I, Whenever I build a fly, I tell Johnny, I say, you know, build me a statue. This is the greatest fly on earth. And the bottom line is, is eight out of ten of them don't hunt, and they don't swim, and they don't fish. And so if you don't go out and hunt that fly, swim it, on the, and I don't mean putting it in the water in front of you with your rod tip and swimming it around in little motions in a circle. I mean fish it. Go out and see how it goes. Because I'm telling you, once you've got everything done, the last point I'll make about this is you go through what you want it to do, how you're going to do it, does it keep your footprint, does it swim, then you reduce, reduce, reduce down to the most basic elements. Because the most basic fly is going to swim better. And does it still do everything you want it to do, just like Johnny's Kill Whitey? This fly, that fly started out completely, not completely different, but it's just been refined down to the point that it's at its, its simplest form, 
and it just flat out hunts. That thing gets it done. So that's kind of how I do my own. I mean, I don't simply, and the other thing I do is I, I, I keep notes and I draw everything. Everybody that's ever been in the shop seen, I've got these notebooks everywhere. I've got them in the can, I've got them in the car, I've got them everywhere I go. And whenever I'm there, and I have them on the river, because I forget things, I'll look at that, I have this on the river with me, and I'll take notes. I'm, I'll be looking at it going, man, I wish that thing had a little bit more of this or that, or it's not stalling out enough in the front. Just make a note, go back, add or subtract, and make it happen. So, on to Paul's question. The first one was, uh, when do you do articulation over uh, no articulation? Great question. Get that. I get that in some form or another really, really, really frequently. And so, basically, to the point that I was making before, you reduce it to the simplest form. And it's important to know that we didn't start articulating the flies, and I mentioned that last time. And in the old days, when we first started, we had these super huge long hooks. And the fish would come up and bash the head, and we couldn't hook them. And so we started articulating mostly to get a smaller hook up front because we knew they were attacking. They'd come up on this fly, they'd attack the eye of that fly or the head, and we didn't have a hook. It's way the hell back here. We never hooked up. So originally we started doing that simply to move our hooks forward to get them closer to where the fish was biting. So for me, when I look at that, it's down to its simplest form. If this fly, like this is a number four zoo cougar, and the hook's right here, the point's here, it's right behind the head where the fish is going to strike. I have no reason to articulate this fly. Take it to its simplest form. Does it hunt? Does it swim? Does it do what you want it to with that single hook? Great, leave it. I mean, when you have an articulated fly, you've got, you've got opportunity to have the thing foul. You know, you throw it out there, it fouls up, and it might be the one time you didn't need it to. So the simplest form is a single hook. If I can do that, I'm going to. Generally speaking, if a fly is a size 4 or smaller, 4, 6s, 8s, uh, an 8 is not a streamer, by the way, it, it is, it's a wet fly. 4s uh, and 6s, that would be a streamer, be a single hook. So that at that point, anything 2.5 to 3 inches, I'm going to try to keep it into the uh, single hook thing. So, but that doesn't mean you can't, I mean, you can do whatever you want. I just, I, I like to keep it very simple. The next question was, when do you use wool over deer hair? That is the single most common question in one form or another I think I've gotten in the last 15 years. And the most common one is, because the zoo cougar was so popular when it first came out, the most common question, I, I know it's the most common question ever, guys, did you ever think about putting wool on this? Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> I mean, I build my flies for a purpose. I do it on purpose. I don't just guess. And I did do this fly out of wool, too. I did it both ways. Uh, but I, it wasn't designed to do that. You know, you, you're doing this for a purpose. You're doing it, you know, like I said, you, you, why are you, what do you want the fly to do? How are you going to achieve it? So first I decide, what do I want this fly to do? And then I decide, how am I going to achieve what I want it to do? This fly is designed to flutter and be pulled underwater by a sinking line. It has multiple... There's multiple reasons why you use one or the other, but the hair is more buoyant than the wool. The wool holds, it's not that the wool sinks really, it's kind of neutral buoyancy until it gets all that water wrapped around the head of the hair of the wool. With deer hair, it sheds it, it's hollow, it's buoyant, and so what's this fly going to do? This fly is going to ride head up a little bit, the line's going to do this, and this fly is going to flutter back and forth and it's not going to sink rapidly in the water. Fish and weed bit. This fly is absolute money. Or any fly like this that's got this not that's buoyant, that's going to try to come up. You're running weed beds. Well, this is money. Take the same fly with a wool head, you're in the weeds. All right? This fly is going to drop through the water column. And it's basically, and of course, this one's even got lead eyes. This one does not. And so this one's by design. This is designed to hit water columns and flutter back and forth and uh, ideally what I was looking for when I came up with that fly is it would run kind of fast because it's super light and then it hit a current when you slow down and maybe look injured. All right, so this one's going to swim this way more. You take the wool head flies, they're going to swim head down more. And it's all about design. Do you want it lower to the bottom? Do you want it right near the bottom? You're going to fish weeds, you're going to fish hydraulic, 
You've got a lot of bubbly water like here on the Madison. This fly goes through that surface current faster. So it's like pow, down it goes. Doom like that. But it's also going to jig like this, which is a great fly. This is one of the, my favorite flies. This is Bob Lindzeman's fly. Well, it's, it's Bob and Scott Smith's fly. This is one of my favorite flies on earth. But it's also a very heavy fly when it gets wet. It's got rabbit and it's got wool. So it's doing just the opposite of mallard flank and deer hair, but both really good sculpin patterns. So that's when I do it. I just look at it, go back to the basics. What do you want the fly to do? How are you going to achieve it? And then know your materials, take it out. You know what this is going to do. It's going to be lighter. And then think about it, watch it swim, and achieve your goal that way. But don't just simply put it on and say, okay, it's going to work. Like I said before, 8 out of 10 of my flies uh, didn't really cut it. So the last thing he had was about uh, hook selection. And I think I went over that last time we did this pretty well, of how and why I do the, the, the hooks I use. I simply look for fit and finish on the hook. Mostly what I'm looking for is function. Just right back to the original stuff we're talking about. What do you want it to do and how are you going to achieve it? I don't want a super heavy hook in the rear end because I want that rear end to swim faster. So I like a lighter wire hook in the back, but I still like the gap. But I don't care about the hook so much, the company of the hook, so to speak. I just like to make sure that the shape fits it, because I get that question all the time. What hook should I, whatever one you think looks good, and does it achieve the, you know, what you're after? So, bottom line is, I like the front end of the hook, or the front end of the fly to have a little bit more friction in the rear end so that it swims better. I use the materials. And, and by the way, there are so many materials you can use, you've got to substitute. I've been tying for 50 years, and every year there's a new material comes out, and they say, this does this, this does that. I go out and test them. One of them's a laser yarn, the new wool, the wool substitute, this one right here. I love this stuff. It's unbelievable, but it's lighter than wool, and it sheds water faster. But I have to figure that out because I haven't used it enough. That's what you have to do. You have to go out, have to try it, swim it, and here's the bad news. That means you have to go fishing more. So that was a hall pass for you to tell whoever it is that's stopping you from fishing that this is research. So get out, do your research, see if, the fish, if it swims, if it's hunting, and then reduce it down to its basic form, and you'll have one that hunts. Hope that helps you out. Thanks. Whoops, forgot it again. Thank you again, Paul, for your question you sent in. Remember, anybody that sends these in, we send you a hat and a box of flies. And we thank you very much for that. We appreciate it. Any questions you've got, send them in. doesn't matter what it's about. It doesn't have to be fly design. It could be fishing, whatever it is, and we'll try to get to it. But we're going to try to get the one that's the most around most of the questions that we get. Thanks a lot.